Hello, I'm Corinne and this is my YouTube channel Corinne Crafts and thank you for joining me here today. Today is Thursday so that means it is time for my Thrifty Thursday card. Um, I hope you're loving this series of things so we're just using the bare minimum amount of our craft stash. Now today the main focus is a two and a half by six inch strip of watercolour card and we're going to make this card. Isn't that pretty so we're going to make the watercolor strip we're going to make the little butterflies that go across the watercolor strip and then we're going to make this really really gorgeous background now if you want to change this up have this completely white if you are into your clean and simple that will work too um but i just think this is really pretty i'm loving making backgrounds i'm loving making those just really simple and that's your main piece out of your craft stash obviously i've used the pink i've used a piece of multi-purpose but most people have got those things in their craft stash so oops it's a bit out of focus but you will see and there'll be lots of pictures of it so i hope you like this and if you do please watch on and i'll show you how it's made said this is our thrifty thursday card this week um very loosely thrifty thursday but the only two main things we're going to use is a piece of white um card so this is multi-purpose card and i've cut this to if i try and remember six and three quarters by five inches and then this is a piece of watercolor card that i've cut to two and a half by six inches but actually you could get that out of multi-purpose card as well so those are my two main components and that's what we're going to do everything out of so let's have a go first now you'll see i've already got some ink pads on the table i've got my um duet ink pads you could be using your tim holtz distress ink pads your tim holtz water reactive type ink pads crafters companion water reactive anything i want some that are going to work with water because i want to be able to do a little bit of painting so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to move this one out of the way don't want to get it mucky i'm going to use this little two um two and a half by did i say six inches yes i did six inch piece of card so i'm going to get my three inks Excuse a bit of blue on there. I was doing, it was when I was doing that stamping the first time. I tried to do the two together. Not a good move. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down my blue. And I'm going to get my water spray and I'm just going to spritz it a little bit. I've got a paintbrush and I've got a pot of water in case I need it. So I'm just going to wet my brush. So this is why I'm using um, a watercolour cardstock. And I'm just going to come in here and then... So I want to do it roughly, I want it in three sections, two inches, two inches and two inches. So I'm going to come in here with my blue and I'm just going to paint a little sort of square on, just like that. It doesn't have to be, and it's nice actually if it's not perfect. So we can put that on there. So that's going to, we need that to dry. I'm going to do the top one next, just to give that a minute to dry so that it doesn't go. I've added a bit too much water on that. So let's go in with my pink. So this is... Raspberry Ripple. I'm not going to spray on this. I'm just going to use the water off my paintbrush. Oh, I think I'm introducing a bit of blue there. Let's just try that again. Let's come down here. It is a pink with a bit of blue in it anyway, isn't it? But even so. Okay, so let's pick that up. I think we need a bit more water. Probably my water's not the cleanest, actually. Uh, but don't worry. Everything that you do, as long as you keep going, it'll just work. Right, so I'm going to put on the pink. I have to pick up a bit of that. I'm going to do a couple of, of coats just to sort of build it up. So I'm going to come down third again, pick up some of this, just to try and add a bit more depth to the colour. OK, I can always just give it a little bit of a blast because that's quite wet. Just bear with me while I blast this dry. See, I've not gone super dry. I've only sort of dried it off. I want the colours to blend, but I don't want to create mud effects. So let's go in with the next one. Let's just make sure my brush is nice and clean. I'm just going to spritz my brush. There we go. And I'm going to, I am going to use my water spray because my water's getting a bit mucky. Should have changed it. So going in with a bit of yellow and then I'm going to just go, I'm going to go over the two colours. Now, what you could do, if you've got lots of ink pads in a shade, maybe you've got lots of different blues or lots of different greens. You could just go dark to light green. That would look nice dark to light blue, dark to light 
purple um, or your pinks or whatever you wanted to do. But I thought I would do this sort of in really nice, my primary colours. So I just thought that would look nice. I'm going to pick up a bit more of this blue and I'm going to over paint this a little bit more. So remember, every time you go on, you're adding another layer and it's just going to get a little bit more intense. I'm also blending where those colours meet. I'm going to pick up a bit more of that pink. I'm going to come across here. And you're just going to add in a bit more. There we go. Just intensifying that colour. We're getting there, actually. That's not bad. Let me give that another quick dry and then we can have a look at what it looks like. Right, now, the last thing you want is perfection because that's not what this is about. But I'm just going to do one more layer of each colour. I think I might... I've nearly enough yellow on there, so let's put that on. And then we're going to come in with the blue, just to add in a bit more intensity. I'm actually going to think this through logically, Corinne. So I'm going to start with the yellow. It's my palest colour. Ah, look, you see, that's much more. I've not added as much water. So by not adding as much water, it gives me that more intense colour. There we go. That's better. Then I'm going to come in with the pink again. Not putting in as much colour gives it a bit more intensity. I'm just going to square that square off. Now, I've not really blended that much, but that's fine. That's not what it's about. It's about laying down those colours. And then we can come in with this blue. I need a little bit of water just to blend that. And then we can put the blue over the top. OK, so the last thing you want to do, get rid of all this off here and get that dry. Now, I do need this dry now. So let's give that a quick dry. That doesn't look bad. I dried the back and the front and it sort of flattened it out again. Now, the other thing I've done is while I was doing that, I've also done exactly the same on a larger piece. And then I've used, I just found some butterfly dyes. Now, I've got this massive set. It's one of these sets that have got like 30 odd butterfly dyes on. And I've just cut a large and a small out of each colour. I was going to cut them again, but you don't need to see. You can see what dye cutting is like. So you can see I've cut a large and a small from each of these. So I can put those to one side. Let me just show you that I've got them all cut out. There we go. That's just literally watercolour card, exactly the same as that, but a little bit bigger, or it probably doesn't need to. I thought I was going to cut two of sets of each. And then I've cut two blue, two yellow, two pink, large and small from each. Okay, so we're going to put all of these to one side. Let's just put that to there. I want those and those. I don't need those dyes again. All right, so that's the next bit. So that's my sort of top layers all sorted. We can finish those. And the next thing I want to do is bring in this larger piece that I showed you. So this, as I said, was six and three quarters by five inches. And I've already stamped with a stamp, happy birthday. And all I've done is I inked half of it up and stamped birthday twice, then cleaned that down and then stamped the ink, the top half of the stamp with the pink and stamped that down. That's fine. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of, dec you know, decorating. I started this card by mounting that onto pink and putting it onto there. And it looks lovely. And if you're into clean and simple cards, it would be absolutely perfect. But you know, I struggle so much with my clean and simple cards. So I decided I'm not going to do a clean and simple card. I'm going to just add a little bit of detail. Now, do you remember my... Um, stencil that I've made. I've used this lots and lots of times. I'm going to just start using this and I just keep bringing this in to remind me of where I'm going to be. So I'm going to pop this on here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a stamping mat and I'm also going to bring in a piece of kitchen roll because I want to stamp off the edge. So I'm going to stamp. Oh, what I need to do as well as I want to mask off my happy birthday because I don't want to get ink on that. So I've just cut a little bit of masking tape just to cover that up. Okay, so I'm going to come in with my pink first. So I can come straight into my ink pad, pick up a bit, tap it on here. I don't want too much. And I'm just going to blend. Now, this is about subtlety. And I'm not the best at subtle, but we're going to have a go. We're going to have a go. And we're just going to try and do a little bit of blend. Remember to come right to the edges. Look, you can see I've come off the edge of the card. Now, you can hardly see that. But when you lift it off, doesn't it look pretty? So let's take a smaller one. And then we can remember, oh, that's going to tuck under nicely. I'm going to use this one. The white was when I did my um, bouquet um, demonstration where you do the, um, that where the blur, the out of focus image. So we use the white pigment ink. So that's just what's on this stencil. But it's dried. 
it's fine. So we're coming in with the pink. So the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with a bit of blue. So I've got my blue ink pad. I always tap a little bit off on the mat because I don't want too much. The whole point about this is it's really soft. And then I'm going to go over. So I am absolutely overlapping those. I mean, careful not to come off the edge of my stencil because it's something I am prone to do. Put that one there. Let's put another one just here. Now, again, this is one of those where every time you do it, you're going to get a different effect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Let's come in with yellow next. And let's go. What should we do? Should we do? Let's do a little bit of joining up, shall we? So let's join those two up. Bit of yellow. Oh, I didn't tap that off, but it'll be fine. Yellow's a pale colour. So you can see my yellow there. Let's do a bit of yellow just here. And you can see it's very subtle, but that's all I want. I just want, I'm just creating a lovely bit of background. Okay probably do might be able to put a few more on we'll see how it goes and then i'm going to come in with a stencil you've seen me use this stencil quite a lot of times it's just one i had in my crafty stash and i'm just going to lay that down there over my sentiment and i'm just going to grab my blue i've got a bit of blue here and i'm just going to go very lightly all the way i'm just going to pick a path i'm going to come down here just pick a path just remember where i picked just do that. So I'm not doing any particular circles, but I'm just, again, very light. But once you put it up, doesn't that look beautiful? I'm really loving that. Okay, so that'll do for that. Then the other thing I've got is um, an All and Create set. Um, I'm going to use a different stamp than one I was practicing with. I'm going to use this one that's here. It's all text, so we can grab the text bits off there. And I'm going to pop this on to here. Now I am going to come off my colour range and I'm just going to use a little bit of grey. So I'm just going to just, I'm not even inking up the whole stamp. I'm just inking up part of it. So, yeah, that's the right way up. So we can then just pick up a little bit and we can just rock that over. Oops. Oh, now that's quite bold. So what I'm actually going to do, which is what I did when I was practising, was put some on one rock onto the my tissue and then one rock on it can you see i've gone over my masked area nicely that's how i like it a bit better never mind that will be fine and then the final thing i want to do is i've got another set of sort of background stamps it's got a paint splat i've got lots of paint splats actually so i like paint splats because i find them hard to do naturally you know to make that paint splat effect so i like stamps when i created my own signature collection i put a few paint splats in just because i couldn't create them myself i'm just going to overlay that pick up a bit more ink and then one there and then we can come in with oh i did that last time don't take it off just change the ink color we can do a blue one that looks like it might be a bit harsh so we can dab off a bit and then I can come across here, just like that. Let's not clean it, change the colour, bring in the yellow, pick up some yellow ink. I won't dab it off because yellow is obviously paler than a lot of them. There we go. So we've done that. Now the final little bit I want to do, was it on here? Yes, it was. Oops. Next to that one, I've just got, I don't know, a little bit of random art. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to pick, I think I might pick a little bit of pink. I'm not going to do much in this. Pick that up and I'm going to pop that coming down here just lightly. There we go. Let's pick it up in yellow. You see, I'm not even really cleaning my stamps in between. I'm just layering up those layers. Look at that. I mean, wow, looks like a designer paper, doesn't it? But it's not. We've just created that. This is something I'm really into at the moment. Loving doing this. And then I can take my masking tape off. My sentiment is is not, you know, it's not got any ink over it or anything like that. I'm just putting these on because I know how clumsy I am. And then we can take that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm loving that. And mount it onto some pink card. Brilliant. Oh, I'm so chuffed with that.
I just think that instead of the white just gives me such a different effect. So what I'm going to do, put that onto a card base. Again, I just made my card base out of a piece of A3 card and it measures just over seven and a quarter by just over five and a half. I don't do standard sizes and I wish I did. This morning I had to get some cards for work for some birthdays and trying to find envelopes at short notice. I really should start doing standard sizes, but I work from the top down. It takes two minutes to make an envelope and I don't mind making my own envelopes if it means I've got that freedom to create whatever size card I want. Putting that on there, bit of collal glue as you've seen. And I'm just using my pressure tool just to burnish on that. You've seen me use um, brayers, whatever you want. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring back this one that we did. That's the one we just made a minute ago. Watercolour card. I can use my collal glue. It's onto linen card. So again, I mean, how thrifty is this card? I've not used any of my special papers. Actually, that pink has just got a little bit caught. Can you see where it's come out of the pack? I'm just going to grab my pink ink pad. There we go. It's gone. Yeah, there's always a way. Hide that little bit where the, 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 ink, the paper had just got a little bit crumpled. So we can bring that. Now, you've got a choice. I like blue, yellow, pink rather than pink, yellow, blue. The blue feels heavier and the pink looks lighter, so it feels almost top heavy. But I feel that way. Am I talking rubbish? I don't know. But for me, weight wise, what, blue feels like a heavier colour than a pink. I don't know. Can colours have weights? Oh, I don't know. That'd be interesting. Do you think colours have weights? Um, so blue feels like a heavier colour, so it needs to be at the bottom. I might just be totally talking rubbish now. I don't know. But yeah, that's what it feels to me. And if that's what it feels to me, then that's right then, isn't it? It's how it how it makes you feel and everything. Okay, so popping that on to here. Wet glue on top of my foam. My foam is my sticks to roll. So there we go. We can put it on there. Now, that's not straight. That is not straight. So we can put that on again. That's why I put the glue on, the wet glue. I'm trying to make a similar border, top, sides and bottom. That looks straighter. And look at that. That goes underneath. I'm loving that. I just love how it comes, but it doesn't come out the other side. OK, so we're nearly finished. The final, might be the final bit. We'll see in a minute. I've just got my butterflies so i did this now it might take me a minute i think i went pink i didn't want colors together i went pink yellow blue pink yellow blue so it goes like that it's a nice curve so i'm going to take this bend it up i'm going to get my poker tool there's links on my um, description to these poker tools. You love these. Um, um, handmade by, they're handmade by Wayne. So, um, yeah, it's on the bottom of this description where to find those. I love my poker tool. Um, there you go. And I've got a matching pen to go with it as well. Um, just because I have to have the complete set. There we go. I'm just going to turn that. Just, I don't, I don't do flat. That's just a personal preference. You might want to be, you're thinking, oh, I need this to be in a totally flat because of how it's going to transport. So that's fine. So we're going up and we want it to sort of, we want it to be that lovely cacophony. What is it? A kaleidoscope of butterflies. That's the right word, isn't it? Kaleidoscope of butterflies just cascading up the card. Um, yeah. That's the sort of information we would get um, in our ears when we were on uh, shopping TV. The name of a group of um, a certain animal. So if you're if you're demonstrating an animal, they tell you what a group of that is. And I always remember butterflies are a kaleidoscope. Just giving that a little bit of shape. Can you see now? I got a bit of inspiration from a few different things I saw on Pinterest to this. I've changed quite a lot of it. I always end up doing, I just sort of like, oh, I like that design. And the design I saw had single, it was a single colour up here. It was like a dark colour and then a lighter and then a, a, a medium, and then a lighter. And the but, butterfly type things were all out of the same colours. So they'd put, so if it's the blue, they'd put blue on top of the blue and yellow on top of the yellow and pink on top of the pink. The, 
they weren't the different colours though but you know what I mean they were they, the butterflies matched the colour that they sat on so I cut out two pink two yellow two blue with the intention to put the butterflies on top of their base colour I didn't like it didn't like it wasn't for me so I changed it I changed it to like that and I just love that so that look at that just if you'd have put them in a row they'd have looked like soldiers on parade wouldn't they um but they're not they're not and the final thing I'm going to do now I could have gone with coloured gems but I didn't want to go with coloured gems so what I'm going to do backs of ink pots are brilliant for things like this I've started doing it all the time um controlled uh, glue and I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on there which I didn't check before we started and it's really struggling to come out there we go only the tiniest bit let's come there squeeze I'm squeezing so hard um and then I'm going to just pick up a couple of gems I've got my gem pickup tool somewhere but that's going to take me a minute to find and I'm going with different sizes a large one and and then I might go back to a smallerish one. Um, and then I might just do a couple on here. One on there. I am squeezing so hard. And one on there. And one on there. See if I can remember where that glue's gone. Yeah, I can see that. So let's go with a bigger one at the bottom. Let's go with a middle size one next. That's there. And then let's see if I can find a tiny, tiny one. There we are. And that's going to go just there. So my gems are not even. They're not evenly spaced. But that is the whole point of that. And that, just press that down, is my Thrifty Thursday card. The main component I've used is a two and a half by six inch scrap of watercolour card. And then everything else is just things like, you know, card that you're going to have in your craft stash already. I think that's really, really pretty. When they dry, I'm going to lift the butterflies' wings up a little bit more. But at the moment, they just need to, um, to finish off drying. Otherwise, I'm going to end up flicking them off. She says fiddling. There we go. I hope you like that. I think that is really pretty. Nice, quick little card to put together. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. All the links and everything down there to things that I've used. I will link to things like the brushes, to my pressure tool, to the pokey tool, and the glues and the foam pads and everything like that. So you'll get all of the links down there. And obviously the link to my buy me a coffee page which is helping me to keep this channel running and thank you so much to everybody that's contributed to that already and that's it i will leave you there and thank you for watching it's been absolutely great fun i've loved this i've chatted away tonight i um, don't know what's going on with me and i will see you on the next video so until then happy crafting take care and love to you all bye for now